time to play ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Persima. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. It is a Friday edition of the podcast, so we have another wonderful guest for you guys today. Carry Youth League, a great organization in the San Gabriel Valley, a youth program that is associated with Rio Hondo Prep, uh, kind of the feeder system, if you will, for the students. There's students from other places as well as as well as other parts of the world uh, with um, with, uh, excuse me, uh, students from other parts of other countries and such as well. Uh, but uh, a lot of the students that do come from Rio Hondo Prep uh, did go through the Care Youth League program, most in fact. And Care Youth League recently had its 90th anniversary for um, its 90th birthday, if you will. So uh, what better way to celebrate that than to bring on some people that have gone through the program, some people that have uh, really, Care Youth League has been their home for a long, long time, uh, and you've heard a lot of those people already on here, uh, various Real Hondo Prep graduates, guys that guys and girls that, that talked about their experiences in Care Youth League and how that kind of really shaped their path in life, and that's what Care Youth League is, is all about, is, uh, is uh, speaking to young children and kind of guiding them uh, towards a good path, towards a good path, uh, bringing them to Christ. And to show them that, uh, you know, your, their future is now, their yeah, future is now and, and in service to others. There's just all kinds of great things that Care Youth League has done, uh, it, it, including Real Hondo Prep. Real Hondo Prep, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about that, on the, uh, about the football program especially, uh, but the graduates are special. The teachers are special. The administration is special. Everything about Rio is special. It's unique. And today we're going to hear from a former member of Care Youth League, although I guess you're never really a former member. Uh, you grow up, you're not a kid anymore, but you're still a Care Youth League member, I think, uh, even into your adult years. I mean, I still have my uh, membership card somewhere. I always feel like uh, when I drive by Wingate Park, uh, I always think of the memories back to when I was a second grade uh, kid, seven years old when I started up, uh, having no idea that, that I would eventually... Uh, play in the league for a long time and that would lead me to real hondo prep and so on and so on and so on so the future is now sometimes and you don't even realize it but today we are going to be joined by valerie johnson and valerie is is interesting uh, because she is someone that uh, is really is one of the nicest humans on the planet i've said that about a few people but she really is a very big smile all the time and she has a unique perspective that we're going to hear from her today for you real hondo prep fans uh, she's not just a parent of one current football player, but actually two. Both of her sons play on the Rio Hondo Prep football team. One is a senior, Calvin Johnson, who we had on the program a few weeks ago, talking about his Rio Hondo Prep football experiences. And her other son is Colby Johnson, a sophomore lineman, gets in there, gets some uh, gets some action uh, from time to time. So I want to talk to her about what it's like watching two sons play at the same time. Uh, if it's like, you know, back in the days when they were playing in the backyard or whatever. Uh, so that'll be a, a fun conversation. She also has a, a, an older daughter, Clarissa, who graduated uh, from Rio Hondo Prep last year in the, I believe is the 2020 uh, COVID season, COVID year. So that'll be an interesting conversation. And then on top of all of that, uh, Valerie Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, as I know her, uh, was a, a teacher or still is, I think, at Rio Hondo Prep. So we'll get into that. She's taught uh, Spanish and uh, some other uh, classes, I think, uh, throughout her teaching time. Married to Rick Johnson, an incredible guy, one of the best football players Rio has ever had. Uh, his dad, of course, was the architect of Rio Hondo Prep football. So a lot to talk to Mrs. Johnson about, a lot of family conversation, care youth league, uh, of course, maybe uh, what it's like for her as a mom on Friday nights watching her two boys and I know her daughter Clarissa is doing a lot of great work with uh, photography and things so uh, you know like like any good mom this is an opportunity for her to to brag on her kids today I, I, I'd be terrified if my mom ever had the microphone because the one time she did she was up there embarrassing 
uh, me and my good friend, Devin, his mom as well, Mrs. Drain, who I know is very uh, special to, to Mrs. Johnson. My mom, uh, my mom and Mrs. Drain got on stage and embarrassed me and Devin as seniors uh, during a pie auction. But that's a story for another day. They made us wear girly aprons and uh, I haven't forgiven them yet. Anyway, enough of that. Let's bring on the program, Mrs. Valerie Johnson. Okay, I am joined by Mrs. Johnson. Uh, it's Valerie Johnson. It's going to be hard for me to call you Valerie because I have Valerie, my lovely girlfriend in my life. And I'm just like, wait, that's Mrs. Johnson, but you're Valerie. Anyway, we'll see what happens throughout the interview, Valerie. Good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, Valerie's fine, of course, Matt, but I understand your um, girlfriend. And I had the opportunity to meet your lovely girlfriend at um, Mr. Drain's reunion. So that was nice. That is right. That is right. And you know what? She was quite the star. Everyone's like, you're Valerie. You're the Valerie. Like, yep. Yep. She's real, guys. She's real. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's just a made up <laughs> character <laughs> at the Get Home Safe podcast. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, lights, camera, action here. It's the big, big city here. Big, uh, big, uh, whatever it's called. Anyway, uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. You know what? This is, this is, uh, I don't know that I've had three sep three times having the show broadcast from another uh, another living room slash dining room. This is the third time your your living room dining room there has made an appearance on the show very recently. I might add. Yeah, you're gonna like send us a kickback, right? On that, we get a percentage <laughs> about like the stage. You know, because we're still paying for our you know our remodel from during COVID. We got to remodel our kitchen and dining room living room area. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a very small percentage of of, uh, of what I uh, put out there. What I what I make. So uh, no, we had. Uh, <laughs> Your, your son, Calvin Johnson, uh, recently, and then Jonathan Guerrero, uh, last uh, week, he, he came on the show, recorded from your, your living room there. So uh, just in total transparency, so everyone knows, we record these Friday conversations uh, kind of a few weeks in advance just to kind of stockpile them. But, uh, you know, last night, uh, Mrs. Johnson, uh, your, your son, Calvin, as well as your other son, Colby, uh, played a, in a football game down in uh, Brentwood. A victorious uh, group of guys they were last night. Uh, tell us about making the trip down there and watching your two boys play. Well, it was a little tricky because of the fact that the game was going to be at seven, but they switched it to five. So, you know, Friday afternoon traffic, Rick and I both teach. So, um, and then um, Clarissa actually goes to all the games as well because she's been, Mark asked her to um, take pictures because she he gave her a sideline pass because, um, well, kind of sidelining, but she started her um, a photography business during COVID. And so she's been really, um, you know, doing well with that. So she goes with us as well. And she said, finishes work at three. So just like getting out of here and finding that Friday afternoon traffic. But we got there and it's a beautiful facility. And it was a great game. Great game. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. You kind of have a unique perspective of uh, being a, a team mom, if you will, not just with one real Hondo prep football player, but two. And then on top of all that, you got your, your daughter there on the sideline taking photos. Uh, Uncle Randy's calling the plays. Uh, you know, I always, I always see Rick. I always kind of see him. I saw him uh, last night. He was kind of off by himself, you know, kind of got that concerned dad look on his face, arms folded, just, you know, watching every <laughs> play. I know the look well from, uh, <laughs> so from I'm just coaching with him. Huh? From coaching with him all those years? Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. I coached with Rick a little bit here and there. And uh, it, no, it's it's fun seeing him. And it's really a family affair for you on, on Friday nights. Yeah, it is. Actually, in the home games, he also, um, Rick is part of the chain crew. Mm. So he's over on the other side. And so, yeah, it is a big, big family affair. Um, it's just really great blessing to have, you know, basically my whole family out on the field and, um, being a team mom has been wonderful. Um, we have, um, like you've seen, these boys have grown up together. And so they are just so close, but also through their friendship and them growing up together, we've been able to make really close friendships with like the other parents and the other moms. And we have a really great group and they're just always willing to volunteer and help out and just do everything they can to make better, better experiences for the boys and better team bonding moments for them. And it's just a really great group of women that I've been blessed to be friends with throughout these past few years. Well, I know you, uh, yeah, there is a special bond really with the, especially the mothers, you know, with, with, uh, 
I didn't have sisters or anything, but to see it with, from the boys, you know, the football team and kind of uh, how it brings the parents together, really. Uh, my mom and Mrs. Drain uh, were kind of thick as thieves one year, you know, with the, making fun of De Devin and I at a pie auction. Maybe I'll tell that story towards the end of this, but, uh, you know, talking to team moms, I know you guys recently hosted a uh, team dinner. I I'm, a, I'm a big food guy. What was on the menu? I got to know. Feeding, uh, what, 20 something high school kids. Actually, Matt, it's more because of the fact that they all suit up, you know, all the high school guys suit up and you have the coaches. So you're feeding about 40 people. Woo. Yeah. And the fact is that um, so when I signed up ahead of time, you know, they're like, we want all the sophomores through seniors to sign up for one one day. And so I told Rick, I go, you know what, let's just do them together. So I'll sign up for Calvin and Colby's at the same time. So we'll just host it, you know, together. And um, I didn't realize at the time. Cause you hope, you know, you sign up in the summer when the mom's trying to organize it ahead of time. And then, so I signed up and it's a Thursday evening meal. And then I find out later that Rick coaches Thursday evening. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, you could just barbecue. It'll be fine. Rick's great on the grill and everything. And I go, okay, plan B. And then I find out that it's like five o'clock and I end school at three. It's like, Oh shoot. Okay. <laughs> I have to think of an idea here. So I'm trying to talk to Calvin and Colin. I'm like, Hey, what about this? What about that? So we ended up getting, have you ever tried um, the Albertsons fried chicken? From the of deli? Of course, of course. It's pretty good fried chicken, right? I'm a man on a budget. So yes, absolutely. I've tried that. So we got three big boxes of the uh, fried chicken. And then um, we had some macaroni and cheese. We had some Caesar salad. And then some Hawaiian rolls. And then some of those um, big chicken sandwich club. And it worked out great. And I actually had to get Stacy Press to help me pick up the chicken. I had Sarah Clark come and help me serve. And um, one of the other moms had, she owns, um, the, she and her husband own a fruit business, actually Gio's parents. And so she was like, yeah, I'll get the fruit for you. And she even cut it all up for me. So I had this wonderful spread of like freshly cut watermelon and pineapples and melon and grapes. So yeah, the boys are pretty happy. Oh man, uh, you're 45 high school boys in your living room uh wow uh that's that's uh i'm sure they did a great job helping clean up and everything fellas right well, we have a really good backyard so we actually had it in the backyard okay good good yeah yeah, yeah that's let's keep those keep those animals outside uh <laughs> anyway that's funny uh good stuff yeah th that's one of the coolest things i think uh, the program does is is that thursday night meal where the parents rotate um Back when Sam was playing, my brother, we had it at our house one, one Thursday night. It's just a cool way to kind of start the game, really. I mean, and bring yeah. everyone together. And, and it's, uh, it's something really great that, that Mark does with the program. So uh, uh, good, good for you and the, the Johnson family. They're hosting team dinner a few weeks ago. Very, yeah, I heard about it and I was like, oh, okay, uh, awesome, awesome. So um, yeah, your, your son, Calvin Johnson, senior, yeah. made an appearance on the podcast. What did, what did you think of his... Uh, First time getting interviewed. What did you think? How, how did he do behind the mic? You know what? He is our most um, soft-spoken and the one that's like the hardest to read, I would say. He's always, you know, he's the typical middle child where he's been like the peacemaker kind of thing. And he's just more like go with the flow. And so um, he is the one that I'm just like not sure about. Sometimes I have to kind of dig, but not dig too much. So I annoy him to find out what's going on. <laughs> but um, yeah, Rick and I were really impressed with how well he did. And he just, you know, we thought he carried himself really well and did a good job. And we were just really thankful for um, the opportunity you gave him to be able to work on those skills, you know? Well, what's crazy to me is like, I look at, I've talked to, you know, I think five of the seniors now, maybe four, whatever it is. And in, in talking to these kids for 10, 15 minutes, yeah, I, I still... I see myself in them. I feel like, oh man, that was only like five years ago, even though it's coming up, you know, 20 years ago. And I don't know, it, it's got going back in time a little bit, although they are, everyone I've talked to is a far better athlete and, and young man than I ever was, but uh, it, it's, it's fun. And, and it's, it's just to talk to seniors knowing that this is their last few games they're going to play and then go out into that crazy world of life. That, that has been uh, something I've really enjoyed doing the past uh, past few weeks. So yeah, Calvin was great. Love watching him play. He's a, a great uh, a player on the team. Does a lot of things. Uh, Coach Carson has given him a, a lot of high praise too. And and last night at Brentwood, I think he, he caught a few passes. Had had himself a pretty good evening. Yeah, yeah, we were really excited. Yeah, he had a really good game. Yeah. Uh, do you as a mom? Because he was, uh, you know, he wasn't always a 
he was kind of a smaller guy. It was you're like your typical mom out there kind of concerned about, Oh, every time he gets tackled hole in your breath. Um, I was scared because of the fact that because of their numbers, he started suiting up for varsity at a younger age, you know, and when they're like, um, 14 you have to sign away this waiver you know that they're allowing them to play and I was a little bit nervous but you know as he was younger he didn't really get a lot of time in because you know they had a lot of other guys so um but now he's just kind of more muscular and so he's grown a lot in the past like year and a half here so I I don't really get nervous about him because I know he's pretty tough and um Thankfully, he's never gotten really injured or hurt. So yeah, I've never been um, super nervous that way, I guess. But also I think of the fact is that because the fact that these guys have been playing football since tackle football since first grade, it kind of makes you more like used to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And Calvin hasn't ever been one of the bigger guys. So he's always been against bigger guys, you know? And I remember watching a football game when my boys were younger and sitting by someone. And I remember hearing just like the contact and I think so I was watching a game and my boys were younger at the time. I was at an RHP high school football game. And I don't remember if it was Mrs. Cal or Mrs. Tycho. And one of them got tackled hard. And I heard the contact and I'm like, oh my goodness. And they didn't even flinch or anything. I go, how do you get used to that? And they go, you know what? Your boys are playing right now. They're on the football field. They're playing tackle you're just going to get used to it. It's not going to be, it's, you're not going to be shocked unless they're, you know, on the ground for a while, obviously, which you don't want to happen, but you're just going to get used to it because you're going to see them, you know, growing up playing tackle football. And so it's not that you don't care. It's just that you're just used to it and you know, they're tough, you know? That is, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Cal, Mrs. Cal and yeah, veteran, veteran moms, there are playing, uh, watching their boys play. That's I've talked to so many different people about, football especially youth football and you know if kids should play early if they shouldn't you know this kind of war on on football I think it uh, kids should be playing it and to hear that perspective which you just said it's something I never would have thought about but man God bless those moms saying yeah you get used to it you know if they yeah. start young and um, that that is a really really cool perspective um, uh, Calvin is a senior your other son Colby is a uh, sophomore. He is a little bit bigger guy lineman there in the middle yeah. and everything. Uh, he looks really good, by the way, he looks really good as far as, uh, uh, you know, nice and thick, but also, you know, moving around quite a bit, uh, very active guy. He's going to be a really good, uh, not that he isn't already, but he's going to be a real good football player, I think uh, for his junior and, and senior year upcoming. So uh, how fun is it for you to watch your two sons play at the same time together, Colby and Calvin? Well, you know, at the risk of sounding cringy, like my kids say, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, mom, don't be cringy. But you know what? I mean, it's really sweet. I just, um, I love it. And it's really great. And um, the first time they were out there together, I got, you know, a little emotional mm -hmm. as a mom. And it's just, you know, it's just really great opportunity that they have to be able to play together. They've never been on the same team together, just because growing up to carry youth league, you know, they're a couple of years apart, but just being you know because the fact that they were like you know grew up tackling each other here at home and like roughhousing you know they were true boys they've been true boys you know especially with rick and everything and just seeing them be able to like put that energy and be able to experience this together and it's just been great also with like calvin driving because he could drive them to all the practices especially you know the summer ones and everything and they have the same schedule and you know, them talking about like what they need for their uniform and different things. And then they have to, you know, you have to get certain things that you need for football, the little details. So they're like, oh yeah, we're going to go to big five. We're going to go to Dick's and look for this stuff. And they just get really excited about, you know, um, playing together and having, I'm just really thankful that they can have this experience together. Yeah. When I talked to Calvin, that was something I just stressed to him. I was like, it's all of us who had brothers. I mean, that was like a dream to be able to play on the same field together and you get to do it. And uh, it was fun getting his perspective. Like, yeah, you, you guys are encouraging each other too, but you also get after him a little bit. I'm sure you could see all that from the stands, right? Uh, breaking. Yeah. <laughs> breaking yeah. Down. It's just, it's good. And you know, Calvin's going to tell Colby, he's not going to hold anything back, you know, which is good because yeah. you need someone to be able to be, you know, blunt with you as well, you know, but they also celebrate each other really well. And like one time I noticed, I think it was, um, 
Campbell Hall, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it was Campbell Hall um, one time, Calvin got kind of ruffled up and then his helmet, one of the straps came off and Kobe went over there and like adjusted for him. And I was like, oh, good, good job. Like, uh. not for your brother, but you know, I know, um, yeah, it's just an, someone else will point out like, oh, did you see Kobe? He was fixing Calvin's, you know, cause like I said, we're all really close in the stands, the parents, you know, they're like, oh, did you see that? That was so cool that, you know, he helped him out. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's man. Oh yeah. Just little things like that are, are, are awesome. Um, yeah. Calvin, Calvin does a great job as, as a senior, senior leader out there. Uh, coach Carson's had high praise for him and, and yeah, it's just gotta be a blast for you guys to, to watch those guys, uh, Johnson and Johnson out there uh, on the field playing uh, ball for real Hondo prep. Um, let me see here. Oh, one photo. You talked about those seniors, you know, and, and talking to them recently, you posted a great photo of, I think maybe five or six of them, however many it was. And it, you showed them, it was a photo side by side, one as eighth graders and then one now as senior seniors in their football uniforms. They were almost standing the same way. Uh, that was one of the coolest pictures uh, I've ever seen, honestly. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So one of the moms, um, you know, we were looking through pictures and she sent us this picture in the group chat and Oh, it was actually Gio's mom. She's like, look at this. And then we're like, oh, let's redo that picture. Let's just redo it. We're like, do you think the boys will go for it? You know? And so we're like, oh, let's just try. You know, <laughs> this is, you're just, all you're going to do is try. And we've, we've learned, I'm going to, I don't know. I don't want to give out our secret, but we've learned that basically we kind of take turns going, okay, no, you do it this time or you do it, you know, cause you don't want to be that mom, you know, but we feel we're not, we're like, well, they can't say no to all of us together, you know? <laughs> and so so you know in the end they do want to please us and they are really sweet about it but you know it's hard for them too you know and so um well, I sent them the group chat the boys that day and I said hey can we redo this picture the moms want to redo this picture and so they said all all of them were in the group chat the boys and one of them was like maybe we'll see and then they're like I don't know and then another one was like if we win and so we ended up winning that night and then it was the game in um, Temecula. And it was funny because we're like, okay, we have to do it. We have to do the picture. And I had mentioned it to Clarissa, but I'd mentioned it like earlier in the week and I forgot to remind her. So then we're like trying to go out there on the field after the game. And we're like, we got to get the picture. We got the picture. And they were all already lined up and they were already like doing it. And I go, wait, we're going to look at it. And then they're like, we know we already studied it. Like we're, we, we're good. So they were already like lined up in the same position and everything. <laughs> Okay. I knew there was something behind, behind uh, the scenes there. That, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're like, Oh, you know, they do love us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the high school boys, they gotta, they gotta have that like tough e exterior thing. Mom, you know, mom, oh, come on. You know, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Come on. That's just how it is. That's hilarious. But, uh, you know, they're a great group and I'm sure they see how much, you know, love and support and how much we try to do for them as well. And, you know, they've just matured so much and just being able to see them or hear them even on those podcasts. It's just great to be able to see, you know, how well they can carry themselves and how much they've grown, not just physically, but, you know, mentally, emotionally, psychologically as well. Oh yeah. Big time. They're a great, great group of guys. They really are. Uh, they're, they've been fun to watch uh, the past few years playing football and uh, your daughter, Clarissa, she was a senior in 2020 recently, you know, graduate, of course, um, you, you mentioned her doing work on the sideline. Uh, some of her, her photos are great. And, um, I just want to ask you, well, first of all, you had three kids in high school at the same time. That that's, uh, that was, that was interesting, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, with her being a senior in 2020, a very unique year for everybody, uh, d difficult, uh, disappointing at times. I mean, as a, as a mom, your oldest child is in her senior year of high school, uh, was that, was that tough for you guys kind of seeing her have a, a very unique senior year, unfortunately? You know, it was rough because of the fact that there was so much going on and so much commotion and um, we just, there's so much, you know, so much was unsure of what was going on and what was happening. And, um, you know, at first they're like, um, you know, go home for two weeks. And, you know, as a teacher, they're like, okay, send everything home that you think the students are going to need for two weeks. So, you know, we pack them up and we send them home for two weeks, but okay, for two weeks, we're just going to be home and we're learning from home. And, you know, you don't think that, you just think it's a pause in everything that's going on. You know, you just think it's like something that's going to pause and that everything is going to continue as is, you know, but then you're like, oh, okay. And then slowly little things start getting canceled, you know, 
like, you know, their, their science camp or their senior trip. And you're like, oh, like this is longer than two weeks. This is gonna be a little bit longer here than two weeks, like, okay. And then graduation. And at the same time, um, so it was gonna be a big graduation year for us because Colby was graduating from eighth grade. And as you know, um, Rio Hunter Prep, they make a big deal about eighth grade graduation, you know, obviously grade graduation. So it was gonna be a big, big graduation year for the Johnson house. It was the eighth grade graduation, the senior graduation, you know, and so just, you know, seeing them have to finish up their senior year in online, you know, and also seeing them have to do, wait for the graduation, like, okay, what do we do? And the parents, we were like, okay, our goal is to have an in-person graduation. We don't wanna do a drive-through one. We don't wanna do a virtual one. We're just gonna try to wait for the in-person graduation as much as possible, you know? And so, um, oh well technology is sometimes no fun valerie uh sorry to cut you off but you were saying about the graduation ceremonies for your daughter okay so yeah so we just kept pushing it back and, and you know mark and um christy horton they're really good about um, having Zoom meetings and talking to the parents and getting our input because they wanted to make it special for the parents, but also they knew how important it was for obviously way more important for the students, you know. And so um, we were just like, yeah, let's push it back until we can try to do in person. But you're just, you know, you're at the mercy of what everyone else is doing and the higher ups and political and all that. And they don't know what's going on either. And so you're just, it's hard to, we couldn't plan things ahead of time, you know, with all that, everything that was going on. So finally, I think it was, mid-July, um, they're like, okay, we're going to do like a, dr not a drive through graduation, but more of a drive in experience. So we did it on field one. They set up the stage up like against in front of to the side of um, Hampton Hall. And so we all pulled up, you know, and if you had a truck, you can sit in the back and um, we all pulled up kind of like a drive in. And then um, the kids were able to like, you know, go up on the stage and, you know, have their experience and in-person graduation as much as we could do, you know, and we set up like, a, like after they exited out, we were exiting at the end over on the other corner over by the drains. Um, we set up like a photo opportunity for parents, if the family can get out and take pictures. So, you know, we were within the COVID guidelines, but we also did have um, a very unique and very special graduation for them. Yeah, I saw a few graduations uh, around, you know, cart, you know, caravan, drive throughs stuff like that. I mean, people did what they what they could, you know, and, it, and it's it's maybe unfortunate, but it's maybe I don't know, you maybe look back and you and you will see it as well. Yours was different. Yours was special. It's very different than everyone else's. So maybe that was something to, uh, you know, hold, hold your hat on or whatever. The uh, So, yeah, uh, I was just so, felt so bad for the seniors classes, not just a real, but all over, because it was something, you know, our senior years, we still live, live and die with those moments, you know, uh, 20, however many years later. So, uh, but, but that's cool. Is she going to be pursuing photography, um, as, as a profession? Is, is it just something on the side? I mean, she seems to be really into it right now. Well, you see Matt, so she, she really wanted, um, here's the other part about that was that she was supposed to go on the Europe trip that summer. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was her first year and she was her first time was going to be able to go to Europe. And so she'd been saving up and saving up. And so she really wanted um, she was interested in photography and she really wanted like a nice new camera, like when, a, you know, like a Canon or Minolta. And so she was thinking ahead and she's like, you know, you know, and so this was um, 2019, the end of 2019. And she goes, you know, she goes, I really want a new camera. She's like, I know you guys have been asking me, like, what do you want for Christmas or what do you want for graduation? So she's like, can we put down my Christmas graduation and can you guys get me a new camera like a nice one but she goes would it be possible to get it earlier like for Christmas because I don't want to just get it for graduate oh because her birthday's in June also so she's like can we put all those things together but honestly she goes I don't want to get it for graduation or my birthday because I don't want to just get the camera and then get on the plane and it's like good luck trying to use this camera in Europe you know yeah. So she wanted to be able to practice using it. So we gave it for her to go to her for Christmas. 
And so we thought it was a really good idea for her to want to, you know, practice using it first. And so we gave it to her for Christmas. And then March, that March of 2020 was the shutdown. So she had all this extra time. So she's like, okay, I'm going to start getting into, you know, so she was taking pictures before that, just some, you know, at some sporting or other events. And so then she really started getting into it. And then, so she basically, you know, launched her own business and it's been about a year and a half now. And she's been doing really well. She really loves it. She knows though, um, it's hard to make it as a photographer, as like your main business. So what she, um, she wants to do it as a side business, but she's actually, she was going to um, Pasadena City College, but she's going to switch over to Citrus College. And she found this um, program they have there. It's a digital and web design program that she wants to get into. So she's going to start um, taking classes in that. So be more that perspective, but which is still using, you know, that part of the talent and also being able to do her photography on the side. Very awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Citrus is the Harvard of the junior colleges, if, if I must say so myself. And uh, all, all three of the kids are going to Cal State Fullerton eventually, right? Not that Long Beach State school in the, over there, right? Come on. I was surprised you remembered that, actually. Oh, I remember. Oh, come on. How could I forget? <laughs> Friendly rivalry, indeed. Beach. I remember touring the beach, touring, uh, yeah, beach, Long Beach State. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, no, all, all kidding aside. Uh, wherever they end up, they're going to be, they're going to do great. All three of your kids. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll have you say a few words about each of them uh, towards the end here, but let's, let's uh, transition. If we will talk about you a little bit, uh, you're, you're a, a school teacher have taught a long time. Uh, your husband, Rick Johnson, also a school teacher um, mm -hmm. teaches uh, at a public school. You've taught at, at Rio and Pearl. You have a unique perspective of having taught high school, junior high and elementary uh, sometimes at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I, I asked um, Rick about this. What's it like back to your kids again, but what's it like for your kids to come home to not one, but two school teachers? Is it kind of like, do they roll their eyes? Is it a continuation of school or, or kind of how's that like having two parents as teachers? I think it's been rough for them sometimes because without trying, we put extra pressure on them, you know, or have really high expectations. But I think also sometimes it's been helpful because we're able to help them with certain things. But, you know, as they get older, they need have needed less of our help in that area. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those fine lines, you know, but also it's been nice um, with our schedule because, you know, in the summer we're able to do more with them. And we also usually have off like time when they have off like during like spring break or Christmas vacation. So we've been able to do more things with them because our schedules more, you know, align with them. Definitely. So you've taught at Rio Hondo, you've taught at Pearl uh, you're currently teaching first grade at Pearl Prep, mm -hmm. but you've also uh, taught, like I said, high school and junior high kids. Now, this is your moment of truth here. You're, you're able to be honest. Who's tougher to deal with, first graders or uh, maybe high, high school kids, uh, those teenagers? I mean, is it kind of a toss up? What, what has your, been your experience like? I think definitely um, high school kids are harder to deal with. And <laughs> sometimes, you know, you got the hormones, you got the moodiness, and then you, they're taller than you. You know, yeah. I'm not that tall a person. So, you know, now I'm I'm always taller than the first graders. Intimidation factor. I like it. There you, go. Like there it. you go. Yeah, yeah. high school kids, uh, you know, dragging themselves in, being, you know, being all sloppy. At least the boys are and stuff. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's very, very interesting. So you were telling me there was a time I don't know that maybe there's another teacher that's done this, but there was a time you were teaching high school, junior high and elementary school all at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So there was a time where I was teaching at Rio Hunter prep. I was teaching um, middle school and high school Spanish. And then I would leave and go to pro prep and teach third grade for the rest of the day. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. So you're currently full-time first graders. You don't even mess with those, uh, those teenagers anymore. All first graders. Yeah, just mess the teenagers at home with my own children. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you get your fill from them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still get my teenage time. So uh, I was so, I always tease some of my uh, my buddies while we were in high school, because I was a Latin guy. I never took Spanish at Rio, and I just, I don't know, we started with it. I was like, I'll finish up with it. Some people, I was always like Fred Monteblanco, a good friend of mine. I was always <laughs> like, how... It, that's not fair. You guys can't take Spanish. You guys already know Spanish. What? what, what I, I, I object here. I got to take Latin. You guys get to take a language you already know. How, how does that work? Now, what'd you get? An A plus? 
<laughs> well, you know, it's different taking a Spanish class than speaking Spanish. You know, there's like sure. written and there's like, you know, when you're doing the words, you just, you already know how to conjugate the verbs. You're just doing them naturally, but you don't know the reason why and you don't know how to spell it, you know? And that's a whole different ballpark. Or someone tells you, put this in the preterite. You're like, wait, what? Like, what's the preterite, you know? So <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Cause you know, when I was at Cal State Long Beach, my major was actually Spanish. And people were kind of laughing at me. They're like, why are you paying for that? Like, isn't that like an easy A? You know, and I'm like, wait a minute. People major in English all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like says anything. Of, oh, English. Like, hmm, that's pretty easy. Like, aren't you just teaching the class? And I'm like, guys, okay, there's a lot more. There's history. There's culture. There's, you know, literature. I'm writing essays in Spanish. I've never, you know, really had to do that before. And it's hard. And they're like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. It's like majoring in English, but in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad, another proud Cal State Fullerton alum, of course, uh, majored <laughs> majored in Spanish, and it is. What? I never knew that. Yeah, next time, like it, we're as a, we're as white as they as they come, right? Next time you see, it is it is crazy. It's it's still trippy to me when he busts out into Spanish, uh, speaks it very very well, very uh, I don't know d- detailed. Yeah, next time you see him, uh, just don't be shy. Throw it out there. Throw out some Spanish, and he'll turn and he'll just start, you know, go going off. And he's it's he loves the fact that he can like mess with people or like you know two guys are speaking in Spanish, and then he'll he'll jump in, and they're just like you know. <laughs> Whoa, where did this come from? Yeah. Yeah. Matt, you never told me this before. It never came up. I'm sorry. My my father's uh, educational background. It's funny. So he majored in Spanish. He was gonna be a teacher or something, and then he uh, he became an electrician. But uh, he he's told me he's used it almost every day of his life, and he's he, he'll he'll speak it to Renzo, and and Renzo just chuckles. And yeah, he's he's my dad is a very well spoken uh, Spanish speaker. I love your dad. I love your dad. He's been, always was so supportive with you guys and he still comes to the games and he's just great. And he's so supportive of you still. I mean, he's, I've always loved your dad. He's an okay guy. We love him. We love him. Uh, <laughs> he's okay. No, uh, it is, it is funny. I, the more, the, as you grow older, I, I think you become closer with your parents. You, there's a relationship when you're younger there too, but you do because you become that adult that they used to be. And, <laughs> and you're just like, Oh, okay. I get it now. I get your perspective. And, and anyway, yeah. yeah, no, he's wonderful. He loves real Honda prep football. He was at the Campbell hall game. Uh, didn't get to, you know, see a victory, but Hey, Oh, well, that was a bummer. He loves, he loves football. He loves high school football, loves Rio. And, uh, yeah, he, he speaks Spanish to some people, uh, randomly at care. It was always funny. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> Mr. Hersma, what? So anyway, uh, so Spanish at Rio. Yeah. Um, you're teaching that to high school kids. And then how would that work? I mean, that's a busy day. You go from high school to junior high, that's on the same campus. Then I have to hustle over to, to Pearl prep. And then how did you put your different hats on going from teenagers to uh, little kids? I mean, that had to be kind of, did you, you know, ever find yourself teaching in a way you would to a high school kid? And you're like, Oh wait, I haven't adjusted yet. These are little kids or vice versa. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I would be like, okay, wait, take a hall pass. When I was like, you know, if it was a high school kid, that needed to go to the bathroom. I was like, hey, take one of those hall passes. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, just go ahead and go to the bathroom. <laughs> just go, it's fine. <laughs> they look at me, I think. And they understood, you know, that I was teaching third grade in the afternoon too. So they understood that sometimes I was like, okay, I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so they were good about it. But yeah, probably the third graders were like, wow, she really expects a lot from us. I want to ask you, let's see, of, of my peers during my time, early, t- let's see, I was in the early 2000s. Who was your most difficult student? Come on, you can tell. No, no I'm just kidding. You don't have to say it on the, <laughs> I was going to say, it's got to be Fred, Fred, my buddy, Fred. We, yeah, anyway. Uh, oh, my Fred, the whole Monteblanco family. I love them. Oh, aren't they special? They're great. They're great people. Uh, really, really good people. Yeah. The uh, Fred and I have become very close over the past few years and uh, the Monteblanco Monte family is a special group indeed. Valerie, another Valerie. Uh, yeah, it's the name thing, you know. It must be, must be. Yeah, she could really. She was quite a basketball player. She could hit them three pointers all the way. Fred was a great football player. I mean, yeah, great, great group of people indeed. Uh, let's see here. So, when you started teaching, did you know kind of who the group you wanted to teach, or did you? I mean, you tried all the all the different levels. Or were you just kind of like, let me try them all and see what fits? 
No, I mean, when I started teaching, you know, I was taking Spanish and then I took some teaching classes at Cal State Long Beach, you know, I was in the in the credential program. And then I, the whole time, my whole goal was I want to teach high school Spanish. I want to teach high school Spanish and I wanted to teach high school. And so, and middle school. And then um, what happened was that, um, so at the beginning it worked out really well because of the fact that we had younger children and I would teach half day and I would pick them up from nursery school and, you know, I would bring them home and they would, you know, I'd have a half day with them at home. It was perfect for our situation. But then, you know, as they started getting older, I was like, you know, I can help out more and let me try to get a full-time job here. And then the third grade, and then at the same time I was still coaching, you know, and I'd been coaching like second, third grade forever. And I loved coaching that grade. And then this job, you know, was posted and it was half day, third grade at Pearl Prep. I go, oh, you know, I, I could do that. I could try that. So I go, why not? So then I tried it and then I loved it. I really loved it so much. And then I was like, oh, how can I get, so I'm here full time, you know? And that was like the goal for a couple of years was like, I really want to be there full time. And then Ms. Lord was like, no, we don't want to lose you. And then, yeah, I just really fell in love with it. And so then I was going to teach full-time at Pearl. And then it ended up that when it was time to teach full-time at Pearl, there was a first grade opening and Mrs. Moore was looking at everything. And so she's like, I want you to teach first grade up first grade now. And I said, what? I've been waiting to teach third grade all these years, like full-time. And I was just so excited about the curriculum and this and that. She goes, yeah, we just think that this would be best because we want someone more, you know, nurturing at the first grade level, someone from a mom's perspective. So I said, okay, you know, and I just had to pray about it, have a good attitude. And so I did. And then now I'm like, okay, I can't imagine teaching anything but first grade. And I really love it. Isn't it funny how your goals, your aspirations, how sometimes they work out, but in a totally different way than you thought they would. Like you say, oh, I, I, this is what I want to do, or I'd love to do this. And then it works out, not exactly how you thought, but in the, at the end of the day, exactly how it should be. You know what I mean? Right, right, exactly, exactly. And, you know, and I loved teaching at Rio Hunter Prep. I loved those years. Um, those were great years. And I, you know, was able to have some, make some great bonds with students that I still keep in contact with. And that's a great thing about social media. You know, you can still keep up with them and keep up with people. And it's just neat to be able to see them growing up and being, you know, parents or going into adulthood and what they're doing now. Yeah. And, and your husband, Rick, uh, I, I coached with him when I was a junior high, high school kid. And, uh, and he's been a great coach, great teacher. One thing Rick is, uh, I could even tell back then. And he, he's just, he's an incredible educator. He knows how to command a, a group of kids, especially, and whether it's be running a football play, or I'm sure, uh, something in the classroom. I mean, I just think he has great command. He has great, uh, you know, he's very passionate about teaching, it seems like. And so do you guys as, as teachers bounce things off each other and, and kind of, I mean, do you take anything from his teaching style? Yeah, that's been the really great thing, I think, about being able to switch over to elementary school, because we did it a lot also at the beginning, because um, of the fact that he could bring a whole different perspective in because he was a rambunctious boy, you know, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I didn't grow up, I didn't have any siblings growing up. And so that is a whole different perspective that I didn't experience, you know? And so he'd be like, you know, sometimes the boys just need to stand up during class or they just need to get their wiggles out. Like, you know, sit down um, at a desk all day is not made for a rambunctious boy. It's no. made for like little girls, you know, like more calm little girls, you know? And I go, oh, I didn't think about that. Like, why can't they just sit there the whole time and just, you know, mind their P's and Q's? And he's like, Val, that's not normal. You know, like they need to be able to stretch. He's also, my thing is the ones that need more, more of that, I just sit them in the back row. And so if they need to stand up during class, as long as they're doing their schoolwork, you know, push their chair in, just stay out of trouble. They're not blocking anyone from being able to see. So just let them stand and do some of their schoolwork standing up. I go, that's not hurting anybody, right? I go, oh yeah, you're right. It's not hurting anybody. Like, duh. So, you know, light bulb moment or things like that, where I can bounce things off him and um, so we can share more ideas now that, you know, we're both like teaching elementary school as well. Wow. Yeah. That's, that is great stuff. Yeah. That, that's, I, I'll, I'll speak from experience. That's school desk. That's like a prison cell for a, for a young, young boy. That's just like, what? He, no, I want to go do stuff. Uh, anyway, that's funny. Yeah. Rick is, Rick is so talented as a teacher. I know he's won 
uh, different awards and things. You're very proud of him. Have posted, uh, you know, different yeah. times he's he's been awarded uh, an achievement or something. He he's a great great uh, educator. And and what's over in? Forgive me. Is it Azusa or Hacienda Heights? Where does he teach? Um, it's in La Puente. La Puente. Yeah, okay. Called California Elementary, and he got the job. We were married in June of 2000, and then he started September of 2000. So right after we got married, he started that job. So he's been teaching at the same school since 2000, and we are just really thankful for that experience he's been able to have and the fact that he's been able to teach at the same school all these years because you know he was a new teacher and there's all these pink slips going around for a long time and you know but because also I think you know they saw that he was he was young and he was a male first of all which is not very common and um he just had you know a lot of passion and love and care for the children they're like okay we're gonna keep him you know I've heard him, you know, he's on club meetings and things. I brought this story up a few different times. Do you remember, were you there? It was the full stairs or something when he did the basketball, keep your eyes on Jesus. Oh, he like checked it, right? He's just like up there talking. He'd throw no look passes like, you know, and I had Mr. Taylor on the podcast. I brought this up. Mr. Taylor put his head down for a second. And, you know, Rick wasn't look, wasn't aiming for guys, but he was just throwing it out there. Like keep your eyes on the ball, keep your eyes on Jesus. And he hit Mr. Taylor square in the head. That thing, oh my goodness. And we all, it was one of those, like, you want to laugh, but you shouldn't moments. And Awkward and, moment of silence. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my, Mr. Taylor, he, I talked to him. He was, you know, he was so fun to chat with on the podcast and he, he remembered that. And, and Rick, I know felt so bad. <laughs> but no, yeah. it, it was a good lesson. It was a good lesson. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I do a lot more games, a lot more up and down, standing, sitting, moving around in class just because, you know, he gave me that perspective, you know, of like, hey, you got to change it up. You got to change it up and keep them awake, you know? Yes. Yes. Keep those boys awake for sure. Uh, let me add, let's talk about you a little bit as far as, uh, you know, your, your background growing up. You mentioned um, no siblings. Uh, Carrie Fleet just had its 90th. Uh, celebration 90th year anniversary it's so hard to believe it's uh, been that long can't wait for the 100th year in 10 years or so um but one thing i've done on the podcast is talk to a lot of different people about their their journey and a lot of different people with care youth league and real hondo prep alums it's been fun to hear kind of where it all started and kind of just the the story right so the timeline so if you would take us back to your younger days how you discovered care youth league and who some of your coaches were and then you know getting into real hondo prep just uh, take me back to the beginning Okay. Well, you know, um, I joined Carrie Youth League very late. I was for, you know, compared to a lot of people my age or a lot of people that you probably have talked to, I didn't come to Carrie Youth League until I was in sixth grade, actually. And the only reason why I came to six to Carrie Youth League was because of the fact that, so growing up, um, my parents, they worked in um, downtown LA and they had to be there very early in the morning. So at that time, during those years, there wasn't really like, um, care like you know before school or after school and so um they didn't want me just you know walking to the nearby um El public elementary school I grew up in El Monte and so they're like okay so they found like a private school for me to go to and so I always went to private schools and so um, I was going to the school and it only went up to sixth grade so growing up I was also part of the um El Monte has this really great aquatics program and I was on the El Monte swimming sharks team <laughs> Growing up, you know, spent every afternoon practicing and then would go to meets all day Saturday. So um, part of that is my parents, they were talking to other parents. They're like, we need to find a private school for her to go to. Where are your kids going? You know, they were talking to them and different things, trying to find out about different, different private schools in the area. And so they were just doing their research. And it turned out that one of the parents was like, oh, yeah, there's this really great school and it's in like um, South Arcadia and you just got to, um, but I don't know the address. And they, they're like, yeah, it's called Rio Hondo and um, it's a really great school. So, but the only, this is the directions they gave my mom. They said, it's past Arroyo High School before you get to like Upper Arcadia. That's oh, yeah. all they told her. You know, and you didn't have the internet. You didn't have things like that. And my, so my, my mom, literally, she drove up and down Santa Anita. I don't know how many times, how many times just looking for it. Eventually, um, she had my uncle driving her and we were, they, I don't know how they ended up down this. I don't know how it was just a God thing. It had to be a God thing that you find real hunter prep from those directions, you know, in some, you know, hidden away, a hidden gym in that neighborhood. So 
Um, my mom, she was, um, so my parents are from Guatemala and my mom didn't know a lot of English. And so I would go with her because my dad worked a lot. So I would go with her to translate, you know, for meetings and things like that. So I went with her and I remember meeting with Mrs. Dowd and she's like, so what team are you on? And I said, well, I'm on the Swimming Sharks team. <laughs> and she's like, she goes, what? And I go, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm on the Swimming Sharks team. And she goes, no, no, no. What care youth league team are you on? I said, I don't know what that is. And so she's like, oh, we got to get you into Care Youth League. You got to come now. And, you know, it starts to when can you come? So she finds out. And so I joined up for volleyball. And um, it was actually um, Kim Parker was my first coach. And so I come and I'm super nervous, of course. And but yeah, so I joined. And then after that, I um, started coming to Rio Hunter Prep in seventh grade. Wow. Wow. That, uh, that's wild. Yeah. And, and a couple of things there. For those who have never been to Rio Hondo Prep, it is interesting you just hit this small residential street and you just go to the very very end and then you pass a real hondo elementary that some people mistakenly go to it's like no that's not the one keep going mm -hmm. uh so yeah sixth grade seventh grade that is kind of late i didn't go to rio till seventh grade even when the, there was pearl available and, and rio even before that uh started younger but uh, so when you go to rio what was your initial reaction to you had gone to other private schools did you realize oh man this is very different did you be honest did you like it did you not I mean what was kind of your early experiences in there in junior high well you know okay the interesting thing is that I went to a very small school in Baldwin Park very private I'm sorry very very small and um, that's all I knew because I went there from like you know first grade through sixth grade and I remember Mrs. Down in that meeting she's like okay this is a very very small school like very small she goes you know there are not going to be that many people in your class maybe you know like 12, 15 or so. And I go, that's a lot. It's okay. She goes, what do you mean that's a lot? Because in my sixth grade class, there were three. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of kids in my class here. Wow. So to me, it was like going, you know, from, because we would do a lot of combined classes because of the fact that our school was so small, you know? So we had to do a lot of independent learning and things like that because the teacher had to go take care of the other students, you know, kind of like back and forth. And so it was like a little bit intimidating because of the fact that I realized because I was in care for a little bit, just for a few months before I transferred over to, you know, going to the school, that these, a lot of these people knew each other for like a really long time. And they had been growing up together, you know, so there's a lot of connections. But it was, yeah, so it was a little bit intimidating at first. And, um, you know, the old library, remember, you know, the club room, the library? Under the stairs, yeah. Yeah, that was my first classroom in there. And there was four, I remember there's 14 of us, but there was a couple other new people too. And, um, I just felt like, wow, like this is a really great place, you know, and I just really loved it. I loved being there. And um, then, you know, you jump right into junior high where you start doing more things as a team, you're really busy. And like I said, I didn't have siblings growing up. So I just felt like, you know what, like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm part of something now. And, and there's other people and we're just so busy together. It's just great. Well, well, there was no swim team to uh, participate in there. So you had to play other sports. Uh, do you remember uh, oh my. Who, were, what's that, who were some of your other coaches and kind of what, what sports did you enjoy or were you not a sports person? That's fine too. Uh, some, some people, <laughs> uh, you know, those people do exist, but uh, yeah. Well, who are your, some of your experiences in, in playing sports and your coaches and stuff? Okay, so Kim Parker, she was my first coach at Care Youth League, and then she also ended up being the um, our junior high leader for seventh and eighth grade. So basically, I had Kim Parker for sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, and made a great connection with her right away. She was just really wonderful for us, especially, I mean, I know, kudos to her for having patience. We were a, rough group, a very rough group. The girls were intense like intense but she was just so good with us and so patient and loving and kind did a lot of things for us a lot of had a lot of outing opportunities sleepover opportunities for us but yeah when it came to sports I realized pretty early on that I was like oh shoot these pe these other people have been playing sport these other sports since like you know first grade, kindergarten, all the way growing up. And I'm like, okay, this is volleyball. Okay, I could do this. Yeah. Basketball, I could do this. So I came, you know, I was like, why can't I get this? Like, why can't I be as good at them? And I did like it. I, I really did, you know, enjoy being part of a team and doing it, but I struggled because of the fact that, you know, I kind of came in with a handicap, you know? Mm -hmm. No, it's, 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 it goes without saying that you do anything 
you get a five year head start on anything with with some than someone else. I mean, you're going to be better at it probably, unless there's some really amazing natural ability there. And uh, it has been interesting to see care kids have advantages uh, really in, in some some athletics, just the camaraderie, but also just being able to play something longer. So uh, you you go into a real Hondo prep high school, right? Uh, after junior high. Now, some people, there's a, there's a moment in their junior high days where it's a, well, are, are we going to go into high school also? Like that's another step. Some people it's, yeah, of course we're going to high school, but was there any doubt or anything of that nature of, of you going to Rio or maybe going somewhere else? No, no, there was never a question whether or not I was going to go to Rio Hunter Prep um, High School. Yeah, my parents were really happy with, mm. you know, finding the program and finding the school. And then I loved it and, you know, was able to make friends, friends and connections fast with, with my classmates. You know, technical difficulties, they're, they're, there are difficulties. We uh, pull my hair out. Uh, we'll get through this. I promise. Anyway, you were saying about your, your high school uh, experience. Okay. Yeah. So then when I got into high school, Christy Horton was our coach and um, actually Mrs. Janet Johnson was our main leader. And um, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> future mother-in-law. Okay. Yeah. My future mother-in-law, which of course I had no idea at the time. <laughs> and so, um, so then, you know, we went on and I was like, the true blue JV player. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I tried really hard. And actually volleyball, I would say, was my strongest sport. Um, wasn't like, you know, I wasn't the best, obviously. But, you know, I tried hard and I practiced. And I tried to be really part of the team. And, um, so that, so volleyball, and then, of course, I mean, cheerleading was my favorite. Ah, okay. Okay. Cheerleading. I got it. I got it. You know, that's something very unique at Rio is that because the school is so small, you do everything right. And I remember the, the girls, they'd play the volleyball game and then rush to go, you know, change the, the, uh, cheerleading outfit. I mean, uh, I think it's, it might be a little different now because some of the girls do not like cheerleading at all. And some of them are totally into it. So, uh, maybe it's a little more volunteer. So you were, were you the, I don't know, the cheer captain, were you, uh, the big, the, the big leader of the cheer squad? When I was a senior. Yeah. When I was a okay. senior, actually, no, when I was a sophomore, I think, cause we used to have JV cheer and varsity cheer. Wow. Yeah. So wow. we had like tryout and everything. So I think when I was a sophomore, I was the JV cheer captain. I think when I was a senior, I was the, the varsity cheer captain, but yeah, it was really great. And, um, we had a really great group and, we still say to this day, you know, we're very humble about it, but we say we were one of the best cheer squads that, you know, we ever had. Because the fact is that this is interesting too. I didn't think about this, but um, Diana Bollinger was our cheer coach. Oh, your future sister-in-law. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And so it was like, um, I remember when I was a junior, she took us over and she would get like these really great ideas because she had a cousin that I think that was going to Glendora High School, I believe. So they were like doing great things. And so she would just like go and learn from them. And then whatever they were doing, she was like trying to replicate. And she's like, okay, I have this thing and it's, we're going to do this. And she would just try to challenge us and take us to the next level. So we just had like a really great time cheering. And well, you know, I mean, it was during those years also that we had some really great sports teams too. Yeah, a good time indeed to be there at Real Hondo Prep. Um, now, now Rick was a little older than you and obviously one of the most talented uh, athletes Rio's ever had. His dad was was coaching um, football and uh, um, how, what was the age difference? What, when he was a senior, how old were you? Okay, so when I was, when he was a senior, I was a sophomore. So when I was a freshman, there was actually no senior class. When I was a freshman, that's right. um, that's so right. there's no senior class. So his class, they were like, you know, the leaders of the high school or the academy for two years, their junior year and their senior year. Now, I think he told this story. Um, I think he was academy president and they're doing the pin of care. And, you know, I, I've been in this situation. You got to read the names that people come up and you're, so you're reading the students' names. And I, if I remember correctly, he said something like he went to pronounce your last name and he said like, Valerie, Valerie. And <laughs> just cause he couldn't say it. No, it's, 
help me. Maybe I can't say it. Oriana, Oriana. Perfect. Good job. Yeah. Did your dad See? help you with that? My dad helped me. My dad helped me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember that because, because uh, I was like, what was your, I asked him one time about, you know, you guys in, in you know, high school age difference and everything. So uh, do you remember that inaugural or is that urban legend? Um, it's not urban legend. I definitely remember it. Um, I have a really, um, vivid recollection of it. Yeah. Yeah. You roll your uh, eyes and think, man, that's the last guy on earth I'd ever marry. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Quite the opposite. I think. Uh, little crush, little crush. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. No, yeah, that's they must've been yeah. a lot of, they must've been so much fun to watch. I've talked to Todd a lot. Uh, uh Pete recently, Rick Johnson. I mean, uh, Rod Bazuzzi was on the program, Dave, Joe, just a special group of, of, uh, of young men that had to be just a blast to see. I mean, we don't give them too much, uh, you know, praise here. Maybe, maybe they were bad guys to, uh, to the young lady. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, what was it like being in high school at that time and watching those guys play and be so successful? I mean, it had to be just a special time at Real Honda Prep. So I had the rare opportunity of being in high school, like I said, with, okay, so Todd and Rick's class and Pete, you know, and them, and then um, the class below them was like um, John, Billy, they ended up in the same class together, um, you know, um, those guys, and, um, and it was really, really great because of the fact that we didn't have that senior class at the beginning, you know, of my high school experience. So we were all really, really close, you know, cause there was, there weren't that many of us. And also just being able to go and watch them play, play sports and everything and go, you know, junior year, senior year, going as far as they did and going to all these, you know, away games and everything. And my parents actually were like, are you guys ever going to go to school? Why do you keep going and leaving early from school to go to these games? It's not even your game. Like they could not figure it out. And actually, I remember being so sad one time because they were gonna, we were gonna leave early to go to this playoff game. We were gonna miss like a long time of school. And then they're like, no, you can't go. And I was like, what? I can't go, like what? And I remember being like one of the only kids and being like, you know what? The other people that stayed were kind of, you know, they weren't really, they're were like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna go or whatever. Or the junior high kids, you know? And I remember being on campus and being like, so bummed that I couldn't go and be part of like that fun experience, you know, because my parents like, no, you got to go to school. <laughs> no, we don't. We got to go watch a game. Oh, yeah. we yeah, got yeah. plenty of time for school. Oh, that, oh yeah. No, I've, I've, I've been there. I've, I've had a few arguments and fights with the, my parents about <laughs> school early. But no, I mean, they were always really sweet and really, um, I thought they were really kind to us and very patient with us because, you know, we're just like these little kids and they were just really, really nice about, um, and about being the leaders in the academy and you know kind of just like taking care of everyone and um like i said they didn't really have a choice because of the fact that they were the leaders of the academy for their junior and their senior year yeah and to be seniors uh seniors twice so uh that that's cool and and you know rick's very very talented of course uh in in many things but he was yeah i, I wish i could have seen those guys play i've heard i've heard it all kind of secondhand from you know todd him and i are very close and uh, to talk about it all it just sounds like uh, the best of times really at Rio Hondo prep um talk to me about uh your husband Rick Johnson um you know we said a little maybe a little crush there in high school I don't know but uh <laughs> when, when did you guys uh start dating I was actually coaching with Rick uh, in one of the youth teams when you guys uh, were married but uh tell me about uh I don't know the the old Rick Johnson romance if you will <laughs> okay well okay let's just I'll just be completely honest. Um, so I was a freshman, actually. And um, it was, like I said, there weren't that many people in high school. And so um, it was when we had the homecoming dinners after the game. And so um, we would go somewhere else to go to the homecoming dinners. And so I remember um, there weren't that many freshmen who had gotten their driving slip in, you know, to be able to drive with older people, with high school drivers. So my parents had turned it in for me. And then I remember, I have a very um, vivid recollection of this because of the fact that, I think, because, you know, because Rick was there. But anyways, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go so, ahead, embarrass him. It's all good. Okay. So it's, um, so then um, Mark was, Carson was actually in my class. And so he was my escort. And then we, he had gotten his driver's slip in too. So we got to go with um, these juniors. So it was like uh, Rick. And it was driving and then another girl in his class, Kathy. And so we were driving and we were going to this restaurant up in Monrovia. And it was after the game, you know, 
So, um, you know, Kathy and I, we had our hair done, everything had our formals on and, you know, so they were just being really nice. Like Kathy was just being really nice. And she was just like making conversation. And then she's, she was in charge of the social committee. So Mark was on the social committee and they started talking about um, the Halloween social that was coming up. So she was just making conversation with him. So they were having a conversation, just being nice. And then Rick had his window open, the front window open of the car and we're driving up and he's like, oh, Valerie, he goes, I'm sorry. He goes, I should probably close that because it's probably messing up your hair. And I, that was, you know, I should have done that before. So he closes the window and I'm like, wow, like I didn't even know he knew my name, first of all. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> That's so thoughtful and such a gentleman thing to do. You know, yeah. he's like this, you know, high school junior who's just driving, who just played this football game, you know, and had to like hurry and change and shower and, you know, get ready. And he's like thinking of like something that, you know, I would need or being respectful to me. And it was one of those things where he just had me after that, you know, little, little spark. Okay. Hey, to you high school young men out there, let that be a lesson to you. Be a gentleman. Be a gentleman at all times. You never know what, uh, how those, how those young ladies, um, you know, how they will take that. So, uh, can't go wrong being a gentleman, being extra courteous. That's awesome. Yeah. So obviously, you know, nothing happened in high school. We were just, I just had this major crush on him going on. <laughs> like, you know, he could do no wrong after that type of thing. And, um, you know, we got to have really great experiences because of the fact that, you know, as a whole high school going to, um, going to DC, you know, having that wonderful experience where we got to perform in the White House, got to, you know, go on that trip during during school, during Christmas vacation, experience Washington, D.C. in the winter, you know, things like that, that we got to experience together as part as the high school. But yeah, nothing, nothing happened after that. Like he, I don't even think he had any idea yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how big my crush was, you know. <laughs> But I, mean, I think I'm sure I wasn't the only one because, you know, those guys, we just, they were amazing. You know, yeah. they could do no wrong. And, you know, especially just going to those games and being able to be in the stands and watch them play. And how could you not, you know, Definitely. be like in awe yeah. of them? I wish I was around to see it. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. They all knew, like, especially like with basketball, I don't even know how they knew where they all were going to be. They would just pass it. Yeah. 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 Um, Jeff Fairley, you know, he was in the class above me. I mean, it was just crazy how awesome they were. <laughs> but um, anyway, so then, um, so okay, so then he graduated a couple years before me and then um, went into the arch program, so I still see him around, you know, and then, uh, um, then when I graduated, uh, you know, I still had this, this crush on him, still going strong. And so <laughs> when I graduated, um, Actually, I remember um, him call because, you know, we didn't have cell phones or anything, you know, so I remember him calling me and um, he, it was going to be my birthday. Um, so I graduated in June and then my birthday is early November. And so he called me and he was like, yes, I want to, you know, take you out for your birthday. And I was like, uh, uh, okay, yeah. And, and I remember thinking like, because I had seen him talk to him here and there, but nothing, you know, just one-on-one -on -one type of thing. And I remember my mom teasing me for years later. She was just like, I think you changed like seven different times before he picked you up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those things where I could not even believe. I mean, I had had a crush on him since I was a freshman. Here I was a freshman in college and I'd been waiting, you know, like this dream come true. It's kind of like, you know, like one of those movie things. And I think I felt sick to my stomach. And I think I even like threw up a few times before. And my mom's like, just calm down. Like she knew, cause it was pretty obvious that I had, you know, this big crush on him. She knew that I had, I'd been, you know, kind of waiting for this forever. And she's like, you need to be able to enjoy this. Just calm down. You know, she's like, you're being so dramatic. And this, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> and so, yeah. So I remember we went to um, Universal um, City Walk. Remember City Walk, it just kind of had opened up whatever I went there we ate dinner at this Mexican restaurant and we went to watch a movie cool runnings cool runnings cool yes runnings. yeah and yeah and ironically uh was it let me let me mess this up peace be the journey peace be the journey <laughs> that's right that's right so there 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 this all began with cool runnings now that is hilarious yeah yeah so then, you know, after that, we were just kind of, you know, we were dating other people as well here and there, you know, because you're an arch lay, you're kind of doing a lot of social things with a lot of other people as well. But still, you know, we just, you know, also were dating each other. And then, um, yeah, so that was our first date was, let's see, 93. 
And then I think um, in February of 2000, we were engaged and then married in June of 2000. Well, I know because I see this every every year, it seems, uh, you know, you are someone who absolutely loves Valentine's Day. And mm -hmm. I think you guys are always out on a date or something. Uh, Valentine's Day for you is, you know, most men out there, it's like, oh, OK, we got to do something. You know, I don't know. It's, I, most females, I think, kind of and those that say they don't like it are lying, I think. <laughs> it's a I'm trick. It real. That's right. You are very real about it. So why do you love Valentine's Day so much? And uh, you guys have any big moments or big? Uh, uh, did he? I'm trying to remember. Did he propose on Valentine's Day? Yeah, he proposed ah, on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. there, he, he, he's a smart man. Smart man. Tell me why you love Valentine's Day so much. So um, I don't know. I've always loved Valentine's Day a lot. And I think Rick says it's because it has the beginning of my name in it. That's yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I think because when I was younger, I didn't want to be like cliche and like everybody else and be like, and not that there's anything wrong with it because I love Christmas as well, but be like, Christmas is my favorite holiday. So I'm like, I'm going to pick Valentine's Day as my favorite holiday. So I knew that I loved Valentine's Day and he, and we'd been dating, you know, um, and also um, he kind of, he really tricked me actually with the Valentine's Day of 2000, the proposal. He tricked oh, me. Oh, do tell us. <laughs> okay so we had gone um you know we'd been talking about marriage or so I knew it was coming up and around Christmas time we'd gone ring shopping just to look around okay so just to so he could get an idea of what I liked but we didn't leave with the ring we didn't buy a ring so but I did specifically like a certain one you know so I didn't know but without me he had gone back to the store and bought the ring so he said he went pretty fast because he didn't want it to be gone you know and mess it up and so anyway, so then it was Valentine's Day was coming up. And at the time I was living at the apartment with um, five other girls in Upper Arcadia. It was a really great time. I mean, it was just a very special time in my life. And I got to live with, okay, it was Jeanette Martin, Charlene Lee, um, Molly Carson, Pauline Murphy, and I don't know if you know the other She was Tracy Zakula, but she's yeah. Tracy, Hall Tracy Holiday now. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. were six of us all living together. Okay, wow. and <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it was just really great time. It was this apartment. It was three bedrooms. And we were all like two, 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 and then we had two bathrooms. So it was just a lot of fun times. So, so when so you, so when a young man would would have to pick up one of you young ladies, he'd have to you'd have to face uh, an army of young of young women here and the giggles yeah, yeah. and the gossip oh yeah it's hard enough for us young men to 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 uh to do these dates proper and yeah oh i could just imagine anyway i continue yeah the giggles <laughs> and all that yeah, yeah and so they were you know getting excited for us too just because they knew that we'd been dating and you know they were just very supportive of our relationship and everything and they're like oh my, Valentine's Day is coming up. You guys are going out. I'm sure he's going to propose. He's going to propose and propose. And they were getting me excited about the possibility that maybe he's going to propose, you know? So I'm like, yeah, maybe. But, you know, I was trying to play the humble card. Like, I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but inside, they kind of convinced me that, okay, maybe he's going to propose, you know? And so, okay, so I have to tell you another part is that all through our dating time, Rick had always said that he wasn't, and he had never given anyone a dozen red roses. And then in, when he gave them a dozen red roses, we would all know that that was the one, okay? So he'd never given me a dozen red roses. He got me flowers here and there, but never a dozen red roses, okay? So he comes to the apartment that night and um, he has some flowers and he's like, hi, these are for you, but they're not a dozen red roses. They're like these tropical, beautiful flowers. They're colorful. And I'm like, oh man, he's not gonna propose tonight. And so I'm like, you know, I try to be a pretty positive person and pretty mm -hmm. thankful, grateful, try to see, you know, the positive and things, silver lining. And I'm like, oh man, I'm all, okay. He's like, um, he's like, okay. He goes, um, well, you want to put those in, in water before we go? And I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should. So I go over to the kitchen and I remember like taking them out and just actually praying at that moment that I would have a positive attitude and be grateful for the flowers that he's given me. Because I was so bitter bad, actually. It was, like, <laughs> it was like the biggest disappointment. I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to go. So I'm cutting the flowers and I'm just like, you know, putting them in water and everything. So I put them in water. I go, okay, let's go. He's like, okay. So we go and we're driving. 
And oh, I forgot to tell you one part. Okay, so a while ago, years before that, we were coming back from a date and you know the Rose Hill sign off yeah. the side of the freeway? So at one time I was like, how big do you think those letters really are? They're probably way bigger than they look from here. And he's like, oh yeah, you're right. So he's like, let's go look. So we tried driving, driving, driving to see if we can ever get to the Rose Hill sign letters, but we never got there. So he's like, well, someday we'll find them and we'll see how really, how big they are, okay? And that was a while ago, years before this. So then we're driving and I don't know where we're going because he was like, yeah, I'll pick the place or whatever. I said, okay. So we're driving on the freeway 605 South and then he goes, okay, he's like, now I need you to close your eyes. And I'm like, okay. And at this point, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm just trying to have a positive attitude here, you know, but trying not to let him see him that, know that I'm kind of disappointed, you know? And so I close my eyes and I'm like, I can fall asleep. I'm so bored because this is just not, nothing's going to happen today. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing. So, you know, I'm just like, okay, I can just close my eyes, go. And then he goes, okay, wait here for a few minutes. I said, okay, so I'm going to get out. I said, okay, sure. But I'm still thinking that the proposal is not happening. You know, so I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. So I close my eyes. He goes, okay, you can get out now. So come out. So he leads me out. And then I hear like some crinkling a paper or something. And I'm like, I don't even know. And then we're walking on grass. I'm like, okay, I don't know where we're at. This is weird. So he goes, okay, you can open your eyes now. And he's behind me. So I can hear his voice behind me. I open my eyes. I'm on grass and I'm facing, I look down and you can see the 605 freeway below me. He goes, okay, turn around. So I turn around and I see the Rose Hill sign right behind him and he's on one knee. He has the dozen red roses and he has a red ribbon tied and like the engagement ring right there on the red ribbon. And he's down on one knee and he says his proposal and he'd written this really sweet poem about, cause we're actually at the Rose, you have to be at the cemetery to be able to be that close to the sign. Yeah. So he had written this really neat poem about how, you know, Till death do his part type of thing. So he tied it in so it wasn't like Oh a, my goodness. Ah, it, wasn't ah, like, ah, <laughs> it wasn't like this creepy like Halloween engagement at like <laughs> a cemetery, you know? So then I start crying buckets of tears because I'm Lick like Rick. Oh, God. Ah. You know, because the fact that there's the dozen roses, there was a proposal. He remembered the Rose Hills, the rose, the roses. It's just like Valentine's Day, and I'm just like bawling, you know. <laughs> And so he stands up, gives me a hug. He's like, uh, so is that a yes? <laughs> yeah, I'm for sure. It's a yes, it's a yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, ladies, that's a tough question to ask. Get that answer out quick. That's a, that's a, that's all I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. I didn't know all the details. I didn't expect that to happen, but I was like, part of me was sick in there. Like, really? It's a cemetery, but no, that's a really... Mm -hmm. That is impressive, Rick. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. Uh, so did, did all of your friends know, did he tell anyone, all your little roommates or did they find no, out? When he hadn't, he hadn't told them. Um, he had talked to, um, he talked to Mr. Ostergaard ahead of time. Cause he was, um, at the time. So, um, okay. So going up to Archelay, Mr. Ostergaard was their Archelay leader, the men's. And then he, uh, Mrs. Marion Carson was our Archelay leader. And then, um, as we went up into, we graduated from college and we were become like young leaders, Mr. Ostergaard was our leader for, for all of us together. So he talked to him just to kind of, you know, get a feel and see if like he thought we were ready and he thought, you know, kind of had his blessing. So he had talked to him, but yeah, other than that, he hadn't um, talked to, to my friends or anything. So Top yeah. Top secret. I love it. So, Top secret. Good of course, stuff. when I get, came home that night, you know, our poor neighbors, cause you know, the walls were not very thick. Our poor neighbors, they were like screaming and yelling, the girls and, you know, <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. All stuff, so, oh yeah. man. Not much romance is, is talked here on the podcast, but I figured <laughs> you'd be a good person to, uh, to do that. Uh, now, Hey, I'm, uh, this is all I'll say. I'm taking notes. I'm taking some notes here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anyway. I got Valerie. I got her. I got her. <laughs> yeah. So see, even people who are like hardcore sports and you wouldn't think that they got, they can get tapped into the romance, you know, it's, it's there. It's there. You know what, you, you know what I, I identified from your story is that it seems like mo cause men are very forgetful. We're just like, we, we, we very, you know, we focus on one thing at, you know, at a time, I think most women, they appreciate that whole memory thing. Oh, you remembered, you know, just put piecing it all together to, uh, you know, make it memorable. That, that to me speaks, uh, seems to be what you ladies like, like, uh, us guys to do among other things, of course. He remembered. Okay. 
let me see here. Uh, where do we go from there? Oh, the Drain family. Since you two were uh, uh, together or got together, I should say, I'm trying to remember how this all went down. Out right now. Okay, uh, we're back. A little. More, this is like our fourth. Matt, you're difficult. What, what's that? Say again. Okay, there we go. You're on. I'm, I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Guys, I have no control over this. Uh, we're just we're gonna get through this. I promise. I promise. Uh, maybe the computer broke with all that romance talk. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway. It's not used to having that, huh? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm used to football and tough guy stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the Drain family. Um, special group of people for you and Rick. Uh, I know you you each babysat their their kids. Um, you know De Devin and, and Tawny and, and just uh, talk to me about the relationship you and Rick have with the Drain family. Okay, well, um, Mr. Drain was Rick's, you know, leader from junior high all the way through high school. So that's always been a great connection for them. You know, he's meant a lot to him. And so I guess um, when Rick was in high school, he would uh, babysit. I think Tani and Devin at the time were maybe, maybe Dave were the only ones there. And then um, also when I started coaching, uh, I think my senior college, Mrs. Drain was the leader. Um, over the when I was coaching the Coral Marinas at the time. Say that again. Um, you so, cut out for a yeah, second. Mrs. So, Drain was what again? She was my my supervisor for coaching. So she was in charge of the Marinas, and I coached the Coral Marinas. So we had you know weekly meetings. She was super, my supervisor. We just came re became really close. She kind of you know was a mentor to me, and so I started you know babysitting as well when more of the kids started coming up. So then we would kind of, um, they would ask like, okay, so the kids would be like, no, we want Valerie. They're like, no, we want Rick. So they would like take turns, you know, asking us to babysit. So we would switch off. And then when we actually um, became um, engaged, we were able to start, you know, they asked, started asking us to babysit together. And so that was really fun. So yeah, so we both were able to um, babysit them. Um, I think I, you know, joined in later, but then um, Mrs. Drain has always been such a wonderful, you know, support and she's been really great. And she's just been like an older sister to me and also helped mentor me as well. And um, so they're just been mean, have meant a lot to us. And now, you know, I get to teach with Ed at Pearl too. So that's cool. <laughs> it's so funny how it's all kind of connected, you know, in some form or another. And yeah, the Drain family, they, they've gone there. You know, when I, when I think of them, uh, I think a word that comes to mind is, is just strength. They've been through so much together and you almost wouldn't know it. You really wouldn't. Me and Devin were classmates, uh, very good friends. And, uh, you know, it was weird with playing with Devin and his dad's a coach. And it, I don't know. It was, it was never awkward. It was just, it was different. And Mr. Drain has meant so much to me, Mrs. Drain. Uh, I don't think she's ever frowned in her life unless she's yelling at her kids, but uh, you know, the drain family <laughs> strength is what I think of, uh, you know, just strong, a group of people for everything that they've gone through with, with Ed and, and Tawny recently. I mean, uh, just an incredible special group. And, and I know that it's special both to you and Rick. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, it's been wonderful. Yeah, for sure. Strength is definitely a great adjective to use to describe their family. Um, and it's been great to be able to see them, you know, go into adulthood as well, you know, and Devin was um, the Calvin and Colby's leader um, in junior high. And he also taught, you know, Clarissa Calvin and Colby all math as well. And, um, you know, Ed now um, Calvin and Colby are actually coaching with Ed and the, um, um, sixth grade program for Care Youth League, the coach of the Cal team with him. So that's a great connection. Um, Colleen works at Pearl Preps. So I get to see her and, <laughs> you know, just being able to um, um, have those connections with them still. And um, like I said, Mrs. Drain has always been, um, especially when the kids were younger, she would watch the kids a lot and she became, you know, kind of like a adopted aunt um, to them. So she's mm. been really wonderful. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome to hear. Well, uh, as we kind of wrap it up here, get around, get around third and home safe. Uh, I'll, I want you, if I'll give you the, give you the last few words here on 
you know, your, your family member, we've talked about them uh, each kind of separately. Um, your, your kids, Calvin, Kobe, Clarissa, and your husband, Rick, but I don't know if you would, it's your chance to embarrass them. I'm just kidding. Just it's your chance to say, uh, I don't know, a few words about each one of them. I mean, what, 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 uh, as, as the, the mom uh, of the family, the Johnson family, I mean, what is, when you think of each one of them, what do they kind of mean to you individually? Well, okay. So, um, Clarissa, she, um, I feel like she's very, been very brave and has been, um, has had a lot of drive and especially with the whole COVID thing. I mean, that was really hard and, you know, getting the energy and all that cut off basically. And so, but, you know, like willing to try new things and especially, you know, putting herself out there with her photography business. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that, um, um, so she has been gotten very involved with her church. She goes to Foothill Church, and she also actually now coaches one of the junior high volleyball teams at Foothill Christian School. Did you go there, Matt? Foothill Christian School. Foothill Christian. We're on a little delay, I think. Did you say Foothill Christian? Foothill Christian School. Yes. 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 First grade through sixth grade. Yeah. What is going on here? Yeah, there is a little bit of a delay. <laughs> Pause this. <thing. laughs> so where do I start? I hate computers so much. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship. Anyway, all right, we'll try to finish this up here. Uh, yes, I did go to Foothill Christian in Glendora, first grade through sixth grade. Those were some good years. So Clarissa is, uh, what were you saying, coaching uh, over there? She's coaching volleyball. She's coaching one of the junior high teams. Yeah, and so she coaches every day, um, every afternoon, and she's really loving it. And she's also really involved with the children's ministry. And um, you know, she's always been really growing up sport. She loves that. So it's just a big deal to see her move you know, into adulthood and um, just have like you know a drive and passion to be able to keep helping others as well. You know. And so that's been really great. And then also I would say, um, Calvin, um, you know, he's just matured a lot in the past um, couple of years where, um, you know, you weren't sure how things were gonna go, especially because, you know, he was online for school and um, he um, has always been into sports. And, you know, like for you during COVID, I'm sure it was really hard because it wasn't just like for these guys, they couldn't just play sports, but you couldn't even watch sports. There's no sports going on. It was like reruns of like, you know, bowling championship of 1988 or something, you know, <laughs> I was kind of worried about Calvin Coleman and Rick for a while, actually, you know, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. So sports needs to start. Something yeah. needs to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he took that time to, you know, start working out. They kind of built, um, um, built up a little gym in the garage, got some stuff from Opera Up and Craigslist. Up, and he and Kobe would go like, okay, we're going to go pick something up. And they'd drive to like, I don't know, Santa Fe Springs or Downey or different places to go get stuff. And so, you know, just being able to keep up their, um, his grades and everything. And um, so just that drive that he has to be able to, you know, still not give up and not let little things bother him like that. Well, not that COVID was a little thing, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and then Colby, I mean, he's just like this, I don't know, we call him our human sponge because basically I don't even know how he does it, but anything he hears like in the classroom or any video he watches or anything, it just like sticks into his brain. And I think part of that is like, you know, the Mr. Johnson thing in him, because, you know, I don't know if you remember, but going on those trips with him, he literally had like the top guy maps in his brain of like the whole United States and Europe, you know, he was so, so smart. And I think part of that, you know, he gets from, from Mr. Johnson and he's just, Kobe is just very smart. And he remembers a lot of things and he's always very interested in new things. Like he was just like this animal person before. He just loved everything about animals and everything. And now he's all about like car and, those, and the whole mechanics and how they work and everything. And he's watching those videos. So, you know, he's just very passionate about different things. And his mind, you know. 
And then Rick, of course, I mean, you know, we've been married for 21 years and um, I would say if we talk about it, probably like our first 10 years were actually the roughest just because there was so much going on with, you know, our family members and just a lot of moving with, you know, our house and everything. And just we're like, okay, now it's smooth sailing. We're, we're okay. <laughs> like, you know, nothing like, you know, with us, but it's just, you know, like his, um, his dad wasn't doing well, you know, and he passed away. My mom was sick and she passed away. And it was just like a lot of things like that, that kind of, you know, really affect you. But, you know, but, you know and um, we are just really thankful for, you know, our Carrie Thick family, um, especially for myself, because, you know, a lot of my relatives. Sorry, you're cutting out again. Your relatives were? Okay. So my relatives, they're mostly all in Guatemala. Mm. And so basically, you know, my family is my care family, you know, the Johnsons and the Bollingers and Rio Hanna Prep, you know, and Pearl now, it's just like, they're my family, you know? And so, you know, looking back on it, when I, first time, six, seven, eight, I, was in, I didn't know what the future was going to hold, you know? And it's just been a great blessing to be able to be kind of adopted in to this family. Mm. Well, not a bad note to, to go out on. I uh, appreciate you sitting down with me and uh, sharing some stories, talking about some memories. Uh, the Johnson family, yes, a, a great group of people. You guys are continuing on the great legacy that is uh, the that Johnson name down at Care Youth League. Uh, you, your kids are a pleasure to watch uh, on the football field. Uh, I just, I can't say it enough. Rick is just a, a great dude uh, from a, you know, from a guy who used to coach with him and he's someone I always enjoy talking to. And this, this was nice for us to kind of have a conversation. We haven't chatted a whole, a whole lot. So uh, uh, it was an absolute pleasure, Mrs. Johnson, to uh, sit down and have this fun conversation today. All right. Thank you, Matt, for your time. And we truly, truly, and I've told you, I expressed to you, I truly appreciate your support for Rio Hanna Prep and for, you know, the football team. And I, this is great what you're doing. It's so positive. It's wonderful. I love it. Well, thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to do. I enjoy it. It's, it's been opportunity to talk to so many different people and um, yes, to support the program. So uh, the pleasure is all mine, but um, yes, thank you for your kind words as always. And I'm sure I'll see you at a football game uh, here down the road. This will air in a few weeks from now. So we'll see where that falls into the football season, but um, thanks again. This was a lot of fun. You're very welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye now. Bye. Well, a big thank you to Valerie Johnson for coming on the program today, formerly known as Valerie Oriana. I think I said it right. Yes, indeed. Uh, back in her Cary Youth League and Real Hondo Prep uh, early days, or her maiden name, of course, but now she's a proud member of the Johnson family. Two great sons playing football for Real Hondo Prep. Recent uh, graduate in her daughter, Clarissa, and of course, uh, Rick Johnson, her husband. Great stuff there. Hearing about uh, their family a little bit, some insight. And, uh, you know, a little bit of romance in there as well. Something new to the podcast that doesn't hurt. And who doesn't, who can't uh, learn, learn a thing or two from hearing great stories like that. Way to go, Rick. Great, great story. Indeed. Uh, hope to have Rick back on the podcast here soon down the road. Do a, do a video one. Cause when he and I first recorded, uh, that was at the very beginning when it was just audio and it was over the phone and uh, it was a little more difficult. And uh, as you guys saw today, there were some difficulties, a little bit of technical. It, I can't, you know, we depend on Zoom, but Zoom will do what it does. And so we had to pause it a few times. And sometimes uh, Valerie came in a little scratchy and staticky, and I'm sure I did too, but uh, he, that's, that's just life sometimes. Anyway, we got through it. A fun interview, hearing about um, her journey through care in Rio, what it's like teaching at various levels and things. So a uh, fun conversation indeed. Hopefully uh, you guys take that with you into the weekend and uh, recharge the batteries and are ready to come back for some more shows on Monday. This episode was recorded in uh, middle of October, so uh, it'll probably be out in a few weeks just so you guys are aware of kind of timeline and things. But anyway, we'll be back Monday for some uh, more, more episodes here in the Get Home Safe podcast. And I really enjoy these Friday episodes. I really do because they're an opportunity to just have a conversation with somebody, maybe someone you haven't even talked to that much or a good friend that you've talked to uh, a lot. And it's just an opportunity to, to chat some more. So a blessing for me to do these uh, Friday conversations. I hope you guys have enjoyed them as much as I've done uh, in doing them. So anyway, that'll wrap up today's show. Uh, as always, guys, plenty of ways to follow the Get Home Safe podcast. Our various social media accounts, Get Home Safe podcast for 
Facebook and Instagram. Our Twitter handle is Get Home Safe Pod. And I'd love to hear from you guys. So if you send me an email, you can do so at Get Home Safe Podcast at yahoo.com, as well as send in a voice message. If you look at the bottom of the episode description there, you'll see a link that says send in a voice message. Real easy, uh, simple stuff, just like leaving a voicemail anywhere. One minute limit, of course, but it can be about anything. Real Honda Prep Football, uh, a question, maybe a, co- a comment, uh, anything you want to say to me, by all means, go right ahead. Uh, and as always, appreciate the comments on social media, uh, YouTube, uh, if you haven't followed that. Uh, we're getting more and more views there. It seems like people do like the YouTube channel more than uh, doing it, uh, listening through just uh, audio. But uh, no audio helps for us on the road. And so we're going to keep doing that. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. For all the support, I really do mean it. Some people have really uh, reach out to me and, and just uh, it keeps me going. It really does. And it's, it's fun doing this, this program each and every week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for now. That might change in the future, but for now, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Guys, have a great weekend. And as always, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out on the town or around in third base, get home safe. Bye.